Redzini, a name you'll know, but probably won't understand. We often get asked, why a Redzini? Why should I spend my money on that brand of gun? It's because Redzini want to make the gun that you want. They're not a big faceless monolith. If you want a detail on your gun which makes it personal to you, no need for technical subcommittees, no need for bits of paper to go from one part of the factory to another to be approved and stamped. They look at it, they will do it, it's then yours. But you don't have to have something specialized to yourself. Rizzini have a philosophy of gun making, which is that every gun they make is finished as best as possible. We love it when the gunsmith says, that's properly done. And that's what we love about Rizzini. It's that the hidden bits have as much love and passion put into finishing them as the bits you can see. So it's 2019 and we're at the end of the year doing our end of year videos. We've got today our top 10 guns that we've seen and reviewed in 2019. Best of 2019, worst of 2019 and we chose to put Ritzini in our worst guns of 2019 list. Sorry, Rizzini, I didn't mean it. Because I genuinely think that the standard round body is amazing value for money and a really, really, really nice gun. Shortly after releasing that video, I bumped into Edward and Filippo at the British shooting show and I received the spanking that I was probably deserving of. Hey guys, now we're in Birmingham, so let's get inside without further ado. And I received a spanking. But shortly after, they then invited me out to Rizzini in Italy in Gardon, in Valtrompia, to see the Rizzini factory and truly learn what Rizzini means. And here we are, in Gun Mecca. Without a doubt, everybody watching will have owned a gun with a piece built or entirely built in this valley. And it is such a beautiful place. We're here now outside the Rizzini factory. This is gonna be a hell of a couple of days. Before we began the tour, Filippo was keen to give us an overview of Rizzini's full collection. I show you our gun room. Here you can see all our production. So standard gun and then the Rizzini custom shop line. So here we have some sample of what we can produce. So from the beginning, we have all the family of 440 from the 60. So the detachable trigger unit and boss locking system. Mm -hmm. And then we have some custom gun made on regal base with a completely full engraved by hand action. Oh, that is beautiful, isn't it? There is another one only to show you the different grade of the engraving. So for us, this is a grade one. So small engraving. So you guys color case are not just about the production guns there. This is a proper custom house as well. Yes. So we have uh, three uh, full time employee for the custom made gun. So they look after to the family of 440 and 460, all the side by side, side lock, side lever and everything. This is so, a beautiful thing, isn't it? Especially yes. a bar in wood gun. This is a project that they developed some years ago for an American customer with a very, very rich engraving with a lot of detail of birds and dogs. And that this gun makes a lot of exhibition around the world. What about the more regular guns? 
we move from the BR550 round body mm -hmm. that is becoming a, a bestseller in the UK. And then we have all the Regal family that it was a product developed especially for your market and then it became international. And okay. the Regal is a side plated gun? Yes, a side plated uh, box lock yeah. based on the round body. The market is uh, having a lot of requests about having a small customization of the game scene. So game scene with different bird or the portrait of the dog. We made like 20 per years with the portrait of the dog. So custom isn't an issue. If you want something slightly different on a Red CD, it's not, this is what we do. You can put anything onto your guns. You know, uh, we, we say that people are knocking to all the door with their idea, with their uh, needs, and all say no, because when you make a big production, it, this is for sure a mess to select one action and to keep separate from those. And then they come to us and we say yes. So we are for really for desperate yeah. shooter or, or gang <laughs> enthusiast. So market-wise, USA and UK are your biggest? Yes. So uh, UK is the biggest in Europe and then uh, the average price for, for gang is very, very high. So we are talking about minimum uh, uh, a Riga, Riga Yell, uh, wow. Riga Deluxe, yes. Then, of course, this is the, the model that makes us famous in the UK, so the Ron Body M. It's a very pretty gun and represents great value for money as well. Of course, and then you, you have the option to have four different action mm. scaled with the proper scale action for 12, 16, 20, and 28. Do you ever think you make too many models? Yes. <laughs> Our production manager is always complaining with me too much model, and then very few pieces per model. But in this moment, the market is searching for special gun. And so, you can provide. And we are able to provide. And it's all made downstairs? Everything. All the wood and the steel. And if you want, we can start from the wood department. I, I'm really looking forward to this. We can go. We were joined on this adventure by my friend Piers, who had ordered a custom Rizzini before COVID. And in order to see the process a customer goes through firsthand, we bolted him onto our party. Seeing as his journey started with selecting the wood, this is where we shall begin. Now we are entering on the inside the kingdom of Giuseppe Rizzini that physically make all the selection of wood. So the wood came from Turkey. They already divided between competition and game gun. So this is where so, the really special pieces go. Yes. This so, is just production. This is standard production, so maximum grade three. And then here we have all special blanks for single or pair or trio. So this is something real special. So you can see that is only a part of our inventory because we have a second room where we have only grade four, five, six and the exhibition. Wow. So now I leave you in the hands of Giuseppe Rizzini. How do you choose the grades? Normally I choose in, uh, in base of, um, of grains and color. For example, this is the normal for us, is a standard grade three. It's beautiful. Yeah, this is for us, it's a standard grade three. And I show you the grade four. Much more contrast. Much more contrast, very healthy very yeah. healthy. This is the grade five. The grains is, is very black. See a, a contrast, a lot of contrast. Do you see a difference of which country is buying the wood, of which colors they prefer? Normally in, a, in UK, the people prefer this kind of wood, straight on the, the first part and a little bit marble in the, in the finish. In, a, I don't know, in Germany, they prefer uh, bird eyes or marble, uh, very light color. This is, for example, is exhibition grade. Here, there is a lot of contrast. You've got contrast and fiddle back. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. This is very important. Very special piece of wood. Yeah. Could you show me your favorite piece? I don't have a, a favorite piece because it's like a big family, you know? Okay. I have a lot of songs and I don't have a, my favorite. Everybody loves the wood room. There's something very different about every piece of wood 
and they're all in there arguing about which grade five piece of wood they would prefer and which is nicest. It's an interesting one because they are all inherently beautiful and there's nothing tangibly hateable about the things they don't like. I think that's the beautiful thing about being able to come somewhere and choose your own wood, is being able to go, no, 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 and all the things you said no to, you'd kill for in another situation. So you pick some wood? Yes. What happens then? So this is our machine to make the head up of the stock and we have two different uh, positions, one for the pair mm -hmm. and one for a single gun. So now in 20 minutes, this machine is able to, to give a finished stock, so ready for smoothing, or the head up stock. Okay. So we start the process. Now you can see they are searching the tool to start. Now you can see they are searching to make the shape and the head up so the point of contact between the stock and the action. So in two or three steps, is able to match perfectly the action. And then they start to, to make the hole for the bolt. And then we are ready to go to the stock maker. Is it expensive? Yes, we are talking about a, a plant of 200, 250,000 euros, but this gave us a lot of flexibility because we are able to really machine the, the blanks exactly in the day of the selection of the wood and go to the stock maker the same day. So this is something incredible because uh, if you come on the early hour of the morning, in the early afternoon you have already the stock done. This comes out of that machine. Yes. And then we put it in this machine. Exactly. From the head up stock to a finished one before smoothing. So the machine now starts working. So this is just turning this into a standard Rettini stock? Yes. So this is the way to produce the standard Rettini. And then the last step is the, the smoothing. This is the final result. So that's multiple passes with different tools and it gets it to this 90% finished state? Yes. Then they go to a dummy action, smooth it, and then start the oiling process. And all smoothed by hand? Smooth by hand. Because it's the best way? The best way also because it's very difficult by machine to have all the data if you change, for example, something on the pistol grip, if you smooth, if you slim. So the only way is by hand, with a dummy gun. And it adds maybe a little bit of human interaction, a little bit more soul into the gun. Yes. So after Rizzini have machined your piece of wood to take the action, everything else is done by hand. It's actually done by one of the best stock makers in the world. They do outsource it. They outsource it to these guys, Esavieri. This place is absolutely legendary. I cannot wait to have a look inside. The history and pedigree of this company is the stuff of legend. An independent stockmaker and designer that is the place to come if you want to win medals. Or even just occasionally connect with a pheasant. I could really hang out in rooms with this forever. There's just bits of stuff everywhere to keep you entertained. Including, this is a new Rizzini Benchrest 4N for Benchrest shotgun shooting. The latest discipline that we've just made up. Contact, contact. Okay. Filippo, it blows my mind that Piers is in there now at yes. half past ten and his stock is going to be ready to test out this evening. Yes, 100% sure. Generally, in three, four hours, the stock is uh, ready for the testing in the white. So then there will be a small modification, maybe a quarter hour, smoothing, and we are ready to test the side by side this afternoon at the shooting round. So is this process a custom stock extra with Routini? No, this is something that we ask to Esaviere to do for us. So if you book in advance, we know exactly when they are free to do the, the test in the white. So you come in the morning, nine o'clock, and then two o'clock the stock is ready for testing the white. Small modification, four o'clock we go shooting, and eventually we, we are able to do the last modification before the customer fly back on the morning after. It's like, but, why don't you do it in-house? 
because it's very, very difficult to find a, a very good people for fitting. So they are shooter, so they know exactly the needs of a shooter. There are stock makers that are only normal stock makers, so they need the fitting sheet to produce the stock. In this way, you come, even if you have no other fitting sheet, they are able to make the fitting and proper fitting on you. I mean, he's lucky he's got friends like us to help him make these decisions. <laughs> that is beautiful. So the stock now is completely sanded into a much more stocky shape, and I presume he's about to do some slightly finer finishing into his proportions. And it's amazing to see that wood come to life, isn't it? And there you have it. This stock is ready to test. We've got a little bit more to do today and then we're going to the shooting range tonight. From choosing the wood to shooting the gun in a day at a very affordable price. I mean, to, to me, that is as part of the experience. Mostly I can't wait to see Piers shoot it. That's gonna be a real nice thing. As life experiences go, a trip to Eseviere was extremely special, extremely special. It lived up to the hype, the expectation. This place is legendary and you can see why. Walk from the factory after choosing your wood and having it headed up on your action around the corner to Eseviere and have the world's best, one of the world's best gun fitters and stock makers make a stock whilst you wait over the course of a day is extremely special. It's, it's a romantic sort of relationship building thing with your gun that you won't get by just having it carved out of a machine. And yes, the end result can be the same, but it's the untangible, that's why we love guns. I imagine this is what Birmingham was like 100 years ago, is that you could walk up Price Street, go into a gun maker's, pick your gun off the shelf, be fitted up, and they'd take it and overnight have your stock made. This is why we love guns. This is special stuff. That's much better. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's going to look really weird. People will be like, that became a giant. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. This is Fetelli Bertusi. This is stock finishing. We saw big pieces of wood being put onto machines, being turned from blocks into shaped blanks. But however well that works, you still can't get a blank off a machine smooth enough to start finishing. These guys are the specialists. They do all the work for uh, Rizzini. They do the smoothing, they do the oil finishing, they do the checkering, and they hand them back looking top. Let's take this operation here. It actually looks quite straightforward. He's grabbing the stock, he's putting it flat on what most people would call a belt sander, which is actually a linisher, um, and just making sure that that's a flat, even surface. But actually, it requires quite a lot of skill, because if you look at this, not only does that line have to be maintained, but actually this line has to be maintained as well. If you get this bit wrong and you leave it on an angle, when you fit the recoil pad, the recoil pad is going to be pointing that way. And that's absolutely no good at all. So something as relatively simple as this, which only takes a few seconds, has got to be done properly each and every time he does it. So first things first, it smells fantastic in here. After the stocks are finished downstairs and smooth and brought up to the right level, they're brought up here for oiling. They're put in the other room and dipped. And the reason they're dipped is to get the oil into the wood. They reckon their oil finish penetrates six to seven millimeters, which is insane. The oil they use is synthetic, and the reason for that is because it gives a much longer lasting finish and gets a much higher standard of gloss. To get that lasted with natural oils, it wouldn't be cost effective for these guys. So they end up with using a synthetic oil, which to be fair, is absolutely stunning. After it's dipped, it's polished and fed in a successive layer of coats by these craftsmen over here until it's brought up to this standard. And this is a finished Rizzini stock. Look at that. 
what you end up with over a lot of other gun makers is a beautifully filled grain. You can look at a lot of other wood and you can see the pores coming through and this is like a little sheet of glass. And when you know that finish goes in six to seven millimeters, you know that's going to last. Providing you don't use it too hard. Um, and by that I mean just, you know, leave it in the back of the truck to get scratched and beaten and dented. But if you're not using it, you're not enjoying it the same as everyone else. This process is fascinating to me. It, it kind of demystifies that finishing art that you imagine the craftsman sitting there putting a thousand coats of oil and, and rubbing it. These people are finishing hundreds of gun stocks to an exceptional standard every week. To me, it's, it's a thing of beauty. So you put it in water for a day, it swells, two days, yeah, it swells, then you take it out, you dry it two or three days. You, you keep the same level of the finishing, so it didn't oh, wow. lose any, any finish. Exactly. That's so the stocks are watertight, essentially. Oh, well, but, but no, the, it's, it's, not, it's better than that, it's that the actual finish remains as part yeah, of the wood. And, and, and some it has the, the capacity to swell yep. and, then, and then shrink back to shape. Because well, what he's saying is that- How many times have you seen other brands that they go out in the brain and you can the yeah. push stop lever across anymore? It, well, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and, and, but, but I'm I just fascinated that, that, that he does the test by putting a stock in, into a tub of water for two days, yeah. takes it out, it's swelled completely, yeah. you then leave it to dry for a, a tip. When it gets back to shape, it's still, the finish is still, still on there. there. And that's impressive. Cool. That's impressive, I have to say. So that's day one of the factory done. We're now on our way up the mountain. Piers' stock is finished and ready for testing. So we're on our way to a shooting ground. As well as bringing Piers' side by side to try, we brought a bootload of other Rizzinis. Filippo is very good from what I've heard and he's gonna help me put them through their paces. Now there's one thing I didn't mention. This shooting ground is probably the coolest shooting ground in the world. In the heart of the mountains with an exquisite restaurant, bar and an honesty beer fridge on the firing point. This is my kind of place. So we haven't shot it yet, but of all the clay grinds we've been to, we've been at quite a few on the clay tour, of which this is not an official segment, but we'll have a flavor of it. This has to be the most impressive. They've even got their very own Ant McLernans. Get at them, get at them, get at them, you're <laughs> right. Here we are, we're like a bunch of shooting ground tramps. We are the rummaging around. hobos. Yeah, rummaging around in these bins, getting our fix, which is finding a new cartridge we haven't seen before with some really nice printing on well, the brass. Well, we all know that we buy cartridges because of the prettiness. Without a doubt. And it's clear the Italians do the same. Just look at the, look at the length yeah, of the of brass, that brass on the... <laughs> I reckon if you did the whole case in brass... I'd buy it. I'd, I'd buy it. And, Star, um, cleavers... Yeah. Yeah. Fiocchi's, oh, there is brands here that we just don't see. We do, absolutely. Oh, those are yeah. stunning. That These are beautiful. Look at that. Someone stunning. has actually taken the trouble of inserting a little yellow fluorescent coin. yellow ring inside the brass, which then surrounds the copper, which then surrounds oh. the, the primer cap. Do any of us understand why they do that? It's yeah. a Gordon system. Like uh, a, Another UK cartridge manufacturer called Gainball, they use it on the black gold. It's, it's a cooling system. No, Gordon. 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 It apparently reduces recoil, but yeah. mostly right, okay. okay. They put a black ring on because it's black gold. I think they should put a yellow ring on. I, that is just unbelievably cool. A British racing green cartridge with I know, angry look at yellow that. With, yeah, yeah, things. Absolutely. You think it's it's you think it's distinguished and dignified, and then you mm. turn it upside down and it's in your face, Ferrari! <laughs> Piz is about to fire the first shot through his new gun. Now, I've been given this, the Baby S2000. I do feel like I've been given a sort of handicap as a joke. This is a 410. Let's give it a go. Have some fun. What matters? 
Yeah. One time with two shots. The then you have the at the fourth shift you have the double, okay? Ready. In that direction, okay? Pronto. Ready. Bye. Go. This little 410 is a demon. Demon! demon. Well, a 14 wasn't entirely what I expected. I'm happy, happy with a 14. I know what I was missing with others, and a lot of that was just to do with not closing myself up on the gun, actually actively opening and not having the gun on my shoulder. Either not giving it enough lead when I was holding it right because it's a 410 and carries no weight, or just not mounting the gun correctly. I'm not complaining. The fun that can be had with a 410 like this and this feels More like a 20 in some ways apart from the fact that it's got tiny barrels and moves like a 410. That was serious fun I can see why Filippo loves small ball guns. I think I might see if I can find a 12 for the next round though And maybe one with a slightly more adult stock Different. An experience. I mean, it, it's a I got over missing very quickly when you realised that it's so different to anything you'll ever shoot. It's a lot of fun. It's a challenge because you're you're reducing the amount of shot size you've got. I would say that the, the, you're only 19 grams, and all these would be breakable with a 21 gram load and a 12. It's, it's the movement that for me is very foreign. Yeah, perhaps. The gun's capable. I am not. Philippe, what is this discipline called? Well, this is the FITAS Compact Sporting. So here we have a layout with three single, one double. And if you have, for example, a 100 target competition, you have also in one layout, 10 double, five single. And then you have three single and, and then you have double simultaneous. Okay. It's a quite common discipline in Italy because they didn't give the permit to shoot English sporting or FITA sporting. So the only way to, to practice in Italy is compact. It's, I love the sort of social aspect, the fridge, everyone's chatting, it's it's good atmosphere, which you don't tend to get on practice nights well, at English club. Let's talk about guns. We swapped guns. I, yes. st I started with the 410. Yes. The, the S2000 Mini. Yes, baby. And, and you the had 460. the 460. That was so much fun. Is a, a different way to shoot. So it's not easy for a, a, an English gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, sorry, you are not a gentleman. <laughs> you are only English. <laughs> so it's very difficult to make the people test small bore. When we have guests from the UK, every time we take the 410 or the 28, but very few of them would like to try because they are scared about the score. But this is a different, so this is fun. If you eat, you are happy. And if you don't eat, you must be happy. Yeah. So I, this is the sense to use a small bore. So if that was fun, this is the business. Yes. A new concept of gun, so it's a very, very strong gun. Very boss, heavyweight. Boss style action. Boss style action, detachable trigger unit, long barrel, long, very long forcing cone. It's very difficult to see the length of the chamber, for example, in that gun. If you check, they are so long forcing cone. Wow. It's yeah. very, very difficult. So it's a very smooth gun and we are talking about four kilos that is exactly the weight the people that move from a browning or a krigo is searching for eight and a half pounds of quality sporting fit ass yes. gun tall man they say is too too light too light so we developed this model now it is the top of our range for competition Rizzini to me was never a clay gun in my mind they make fantastic hunting guns and but this is this a new approach is Oh, up there with the best guns I've shot at Clay's in my life. It's beautiful, wonderful. Should we go have some dinner? Yes, I'm quite hungry now. <laughs> As we sat chatting and eating obnoxiously good food, Filippo offered me an opportunity I could not refuse. <laughs> this is a Cosme. If you don't know what it is, Google it. I've wanted to shoot one of these for years. What you're about to witness on want... onboard audio is one of the best moments of my gun life. And trust me, if you do so, you'll be weak at the knees. 
Blue or to shoot? Target with eight shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, eight yeah. targets. Let's, let's try and hit something. Do you know how to load or not? Uh, show me, please. This is the armor in, in, the, in the position at the beginning. Okay, so you open the bolt. Yep. That's that little lever underneath. Yeah. One in the chamber. Okay. Ready. <laughs> What a gun! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow! The next morning meant it was time for Bottega Giovanelli. We fall in love with a gun because of the way that it shoots, but we buy it for the wood and engraving. And believe me, this place knows everything there is to know about engraving. Here we are then at Bottega Incisioni Cesare Giovanelli. It's actually effectively known in the valley as Bottega. So we're going to go in there and see the finest engravers in the area at work. Nugget of information for you here. All their stands and benches face north. Why? Because the northern light has no direct sunlight. It's the most consistent that you'll get throughout the day. They don't get any reflections and also they don't get too hot. There are two techniques for engraving. Punta and hammer. For the... Oh, okay, yeah, for the yeah. hand. Yes. So yes. it goes on the back? Yeah. Okay. And so you have the plate, the uh, plane, and then you have to put the ceramic on yes. the plate. No, sir, it's malto. Uh, like uh, varnish. A uh, varnish, okay, so the colour. The colour, yeah. And then, and then you uh, engrave by by bulino by bulino yeah. by yes. hand after by by hand by bulino okay. yes guns from all over the world come to Bottega Giovanelli including obviously Rizzini from just down the hill it's amazing to see everything in here from little bits of hand finishing to full bulino guns to enamel or acrylic inlay like it is amazing what these people can produce the thing that is most mind blowing to me is the difference that hand finishing can bring to a gun. And a lot of the Rizzinis are hand finished. There's a chap over there who are watching an artist spending 10 hours extra on one Rizzini model. It spends 10 hours in a laser engraver and 10 hours hand finishing. The difference between a hand finished and a laser engraved gun, a laser engraved gun can be really quite flat. That hand finishing just allows the light to catch the cuts and make something that is already pretty beautiful. It, there are certain things which will surprise you here. Even after 30 odd years, it still surprise me when I look at these things. But there's a detail here just over our shoulder which I find great, which is a guy engraving a screw head. It's a really simple thing, but the number of people that will ring up and say, oh, uh, I buggered the screw on my such and such, could you send me a new one? And we say, well, we can, but it'll be in the white. You have to have it engraved. <laughs> and they go, oh, don't they come like that? When we can have a little bit of that film, I can send it to people and say, no, this is what you have to do to a screw head in order to get it to match and fit your gun. Every piece is hand finished. Every piece you is hand finished. You appreciate that yeah. this is a bit of this man's life yes. is on your gun. It's on your gun, absolutely right. And that's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Like every single part here represents a bit of somebody's life. Yeah. This isn't machine but, stamp and, stuff. And not just a bit of somebody's life, but by this stage, probably thousands of hours of skill. Yeah. Um, and, and when people say, oh, that's a bit pricey, you go, well, actually, just think about it. In order to do that, someone has been training and practicing for maybe decades so that they can make it look so easy. A trip to Bottega will open your eyes to the true art of engraving. 
even the laser engraving starts with a hand-cut prototype. Back in the car, we travel down the valley to finish our factory tour. Starting in my favorite part of the factory, the custom shop. We are entering on the custom shop area in which we produce all the side-by-side, -side, all the 460 gun. All the 460s are made by the custom shop? Yes. So here you can see there is a lot of tool, very old tool, very traditional tool. Here we have some side-by-side some -side here, yeah. the 460 EL, engraved like, by Bottega Giovanelli. That is a really beautiful thing. Manuel is our French guy. He's in charge of the polishing of the metal surface. So they're all hand polished, the 460s as well? Yes. Here you can see one of the custom shop production for the States. So there are the roughed grouse. So it's not a, an engraved for the European market. But this is all hand engraved, I think. Yes. This is the 692 EMEL and engraved. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful in the forehand especially, like you can see the yes. engineering inside. So, yes, so this is the preparation before the final assembling. So this is the first step, then they, they put the foreign ink and then they, they, they match the, the foreign wood and so on. But you can see the quality of the, of the wood and, and the general engraving. So all of your research and development is done in this room? Yes, so generally there is Roberto and, and Sergio working on, on, on the gun and they are able also to suggest some uh, improvement and then they, they will be discussed with the, with the engineer. So they join the barrel here, so barrel in the white, preparing for the, for the proof test. So now we start working to match the barrel to the action. And actually head them up to us. Oh, so exactly. Join them together. Uh, yeah, join together. And that's done with a uh, black ink handle and files? No, they have a blue color. Yeah. Okay. So they put the blue color on the action and then they check where there is the friction. Okay. Nice. So this is the first step. They're not using smoke, they're using chemicals. No, well. It probably wouldn't make sense in a little room yes, like this. Yes, smoke <laughs> is the most traditional way. Then there is this blue powder that is very, very fine and, and make the same job of the of the smoke without the risk exactly so johnny this is the wall for the side by side we have a lot in production this is only a part and then there is other 100 more or less in the other in the opposite part here you can see there is a lot of small bore mm -hmm. 28 and 410 and then we have 12 bore and 20, 16, based on the 20 bore action. And then for the American market, we produce also the 32 bore. Yeah. Maybe 10, 20 per year, <laughs> side by side and over and under. So, interesting, we saw these being engraved earlier today. They look a little different now? Yes, you know, there is the eating treatment and then there is the, the, the polishing of the surface. The only way to give a very, very depth engraving after all the process is to have a little bit of ink inside. So it just and increases so, the contrast. Exactly, so increase the contrast and, and, and the look is much, much better. Mm. Now we are in the final part of the production. So the stock are ready oiled, smoothed, checkered, they start matching foreign and, and stock. That's just done by eye, they'll feel and yes. look and go, so that's perfect. They arrive in this way, so we have this 25 more or less stock, and then they match the, the foreign, because you cannot start matching foreign and stock at the beginning. Before so you have to match at the end of the process because so you have to match vein and color so it's not a, an, an easy job because imagine you have to do for 5,000 6,000 guns per year so we have a, a couple of guys that make this job we we go here where they assembly and they check all the detail of the production over and under and here you can see 
all the action. So the actions are put together. Prepare. The stocks are chosen. Yes, the bar is the other room, then I'll show you, okay? And then they have the order in production with all the serial number. They take the action from the, this wall, go and take the bar from the other side, put on the stock, and then they, they check the ejection and everything here. Now we are in, in one of the main parts where you assemble the gun. So the joining between the action and the, the barrel. So Leo now is working on a double rifle. So you can see the difference on the soldering. So there is three point soldering by silver. Mm -hmm. And then we have the rib soldering by tin. Brazing it in. Yes. So now we join. They start checking with the hammer and the, and the power for the... So he's trying to knock the blue on to show contact. So points. he's already... So this is the blue of contact, mm -hmm. okay? He put on the surface and then now you can, you can check that the contact is perfectly all around yeah. the surface. And you can see also... See on the face there. Okay. So this is, means that the bar match perfectly. How much more work has this got to do to get this perfect? Depending on, on the gun, because then it's a little bit different between one action and the other one, but it could take a few minutes or a couple of hours or more, mm -hmm. okay? So this is for the side-by-side, -side, the same process also for the over and under. And the process is the same. This is the new one of the prototype with the adjustable Read. At what point are the, the barrels serial to the action? Before now? Barrel and action are, um, have got the serial number at the start of the production. It means we have the phase one when we have action and barrel without the serial number. Second step, serial number. So we mark on the laser machine over there, then I show you. And then you know exactly how to track the the shotgun yes you can see the final step in production so the action are finished engraved chrome line or blue it here there is all the serial number the number of the order uh, the name of the customer mm -hmm. and here we have all the special stock of the gun that we have act actually in production. Serial number in special stock means that there are some special features. So this is probably... I, yeah, I spotted that one. So this is over and under. Straight stock yes. with a red yes, silver with desk bag. Yes, exactly. Very so, classy. And this is for sure is a very, very special request, okay? But all the stock with special drop at Helicom, special length or pull different from a standard one, and all the custom made stock are here. What's clear from every stage of this is you guys don't mind doing something a bit weird. No, because we have our production manager look after to all the, the step in production. Yeah. So mainly we are managing more or less 900, 1000 special stocks per year. <laughs> one, 900, 1000. Wow. Then That's you divide it for 11 months. So this is more or less the quantity in one month. Now we move to the uh, marking station. We yeah. have two laser to make the marking of the barrel. The serial number, and then we make by ourselves also small engraving like the double rifle, the numbers are so small, you have no sense to, to pay for, for a project made by a very important uh, engraving studio. So we do everything in-house. Now they are marking, you can see the laser working on the adjustable system for stock. We have also the special tool for the cap eventually. Uh, we have a program to make the initial so we have all the, the Rosen scroll outside on the metal cap and we leave a room for the initial. So okay. this is made in house.
here we have a, a small warehouse for action and they are ready for the engraving from this step to the to the engraved one it takes two or three months so we go from here to Bottega Givenere exactly and then come back come back and go to those guys yes here you can see also the side lock there's a lot of work left to do to get that thing. yes so this is just how they are machined and then they go to the custom shop for the finish here we are in front of the shell with the barrel these are barrels that are just arrived from the supplier from the from the soldering and they will be uh, joined together with the action in a few weeks here we have the finished barrel already proof clean up the surface and blew it. There are all the serial number and then they match with the action on the other side of the room mm -hmm. and they make the final assembly of the gun. I presume we'll look at those later. Yes, that, that is the first step. So when they come from the soldering, that is how it appears the barrel. And you then machine it to then this stage. When you will be there uh, under uh, on, on the machining area, you can see they make the room for the ejector the chamber, the rim, so from that point become this one. So this is already ready for join. Should we go and have a look? Yes, we go downstairs. All Rizzini guns are hand fitted and finished, but the bulk of the metalwork is obviously done by machines. This happens downstairs on the factory floor. And that is the action block. Yeah. This is the action. Very elegant. Yeah, <laughs> and very light. <laughs> the first, the action, yep. is coming from the forge pieces. And then, is and this then the next step? This is the next step. We prepare the action for the second step. All the action on uh, this special CNC machine. This machine works 24 hours a day and they made completely inside the uh, action. We can decide to, to mount the monoblock action or iron frame. You just tell the machine what, what's in there? Yeah. What's happening here? This machine made the, the profile of the action. So how many machines does this block go through to become the finished product? It's more or less is uh, three machines. Starting with a block of metal, these action forgings go through three different machining processes to get ready for finishing. Each step sees metal cut away until this lump of steel becomes a gun. This is the final result. In this case, is uh, aluminium action. Okay. But it's the, diff the same way. It goes in the same machines yeah. regardless. So you have the detonation is all carved yeah. up. It's very very nicely finished actually. Yeah, yeah the, the finish is, is already very, very high quality. That's exceptional, isn't it, for a machine finish? And so at this stage it goes upstairs? Yeah, so I'll go upstairs, go to the, the polish, and after, ready for the engraving. Because we have nine stations, yeah. and we can mount, I don't know, two monoblock, three action, we can decide. And they just sit in the queue. Yeah. So if you can put them in overnight, coming in the morning, and you've got a whole batch ready. Yes. It is a, it's an amazing piece of kit. It really is. Yeah, well, it's big. It's, it's as big, big as a house. Yeah. yeah. And expensive. Like more a house, expensive more than a house. house. <laughs> but it's, what it's, it's nice to see investment. Yeah. This is, those barrels have just been put into a monoblock on this. Yeah. The, the employee mount this barrel and the machine make this work. Cuts the loop or the hook. Yeah. And machines the rib the, the, and the barrel ends. Yeah. The ejector. Oh, all in the end there, yeah. yeah. You can see. So that is almost ready to go. Yeah. So what caliber is this? This is 12 bolt. It will be a 12, 12 bolt. So it's got a lot of chambers to take out. Yeah, yeah. After, after this, you have to make chamber on that machine. But you can see the the quality of the finishing. It's very good. Very good. Do they go from here to the proof house? No, no, no. This is only first operation. Okay. After this operation, we need to work inside the barrel mm -hmm. 
to make a chamber, to make uh, all the internal dimension for this school. So it needs to be fully homed now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The proof house is the last operation before bluing. Where is the proof house? Ah, the proof house is here in Gardone Valtrompe. Perfect. I don't know, it's uh, five kilometers from here. That's, that's easy. Yeah, yeah. The employee check, check the dimension. And this is the acceptable range in yeah, red? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it doesn't fit, it goes back in the machine? Yeah, depends if too high or too low. Does every barrel go through this test? Every barrel, yes. Yeah. This is the one of the late, last machine that we bought. Here we have a five axis. So it can work its way into the difficult areas. Can, yeah, exactly. Very important for us that we made a small production, small production of uh, this or that. We need to to be flexible and, and, and fast. So the, there's a box of top, uh, top levers made in this machine? Yeah, right? in this moment, yes. Yeah. The top lever for the side by side. How many machines in total do you have? It's more or less 30, 30, 35. Uh, CNC, traditional machine. Here, for example, we made the side by side iron for it. And there's one machine just for these? Yes. <laughs> we made this and we can make also other things. But and normally we use only for uh, for this. Where do these come from? This is come from the forge for these pieces. Yeah. Locally? Oh yes, yes. I show you the the first quality test. The employee. Uh, come with his pieces and check with these easy tools to check the dimension. For every gun? For, depends on the pieces. Because for some pieces we have a 100% uh, check. Like a 460? Yeah, well, it depends on the, the pieces because some, some machine needs to, to check uh, 100%, some other pieces need to check 50%, depend. And here we have a lot of... All the technical drawings. Technical drawing. This is need for to check the, the tools, yeah. if there is okay or not. And this is the first step, to check the, the quality dimension. So this is the second stage? Yeah. They've checked the tolerances. Yeah. And here we have the, um, the machine to check the profile, two machine. We can check the, the hardness yes. of steel after the treatment. And um, very important things, we check the tolerance with the, this machine. This is a, a Zeiss machine, one of the best machines for this kind of, of job. It's a very strict process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How, how many, I suppose it's not many, but you don't get many that fail this testing? No, no, no. This is very, very important. It's very expensive, but if you want quality, you need this kind of tools, this kind of machine inside to, to the factory. Other way, it's impossible to, to make quality every single shotgun. You might get lucky, but you'll also probably be unlucky if yeah. you don't have something like this. Yeah. So every gun has a full 3D yes, model? Yes, absolutely. He drawing every piece. After every piece, he can create uh, uh, a 3D guns and works, obviously. So when you're developing a gun, yeah. it goes through this stage first? Yes, this is the first because on, uh, on video, you can see if it works or not. Yes. First step. And after, yes, you have to realize the prototype and test and everything. But the first step is drawing. You can see the tolerance, you can see if you can make different or...
So right at the beginning, I said you wouldn't understand Rizzini. And now I hope that you do just a little bit more. Rizzini is much more than the, the Commodore Garden game guns that are beautifully engraved with lovely wood that we see there. They are a custom gun builder. They are a, a gun creator. They, and they are creative. Going and seeing their custom side and experiencing Rizzini a little bit more was a treat is the best way to describe that. 32 inch 410 Sporters, side lever, side by side, single shot rifles. The 460, who even knew about the 460? I, I, I'd kind of heard of it, but never seen and handled. What an exquisite gun. Their capacity to think outside of the box, to create outside of the box, to create custom, to create guns with you in mind is actually great. To be honest, before going out there, I probably wouldn't have rated them as highly as I do now. And it isn't really a case of the Emperor's new clothes, but just a case of really understanding that Rizzini isn't a huge faceless gun builder. It's a gun builder who you can say, I want my initials on the side of my gun. And they'll go, yeah, we can pull a gun from production and do that for you. It's someone you could sit down and develop a new concept, a new idea with. There's a reason that a lot of other people who build guns get ready to build their guns and put their name on. because they're a company that can and will do that. They're so willing, seemingly, to try new things. It was such a breath of fresh air. Everybody there believes in this idea as well. And that's the thing that, that sat with me the most, that everybody there is Team Rizzini. It's not just a name. It's a real concept, a real thing, that everybody there is pushing in the same direction. Everybody there believes and loves the guns just as much as the man stood next to them. From the guy sat downstairs pushing buttons to the man upstairs constantly jointing and facing up guns. Like, it is a beautiful, beautiful process and a fantastic team. There's a reason that people with Ritzinis go on about it. And it's not the same reason that other people go on about their guns. The reason is, is that it is kind of a secret and exclusive club. And there's certain aspects that aren't shown to the public face that I hope you've seen in this video today. How do we, uh, how do we sum up an hour long saga of a video in a few sentences at the end? Other than to say, buying a Rizzini really is an experience. Going out there is an experience. It's an opportunity for you to have a custom gun at the fraction of the price of any other maker out there, pretty much. It's supporting a, a family business. It's supporting a relatively small team. It's supporting a gun maker that still has the spirit of a gun maker. On top of all of that, you can get on a plane and go out to Italy and have the experience that you've just seen in this video for no extra charge other than the inevitable upgrades in wood and engraving that you will purchase when you're out there because you will not be able to resist. My thanks go to Filippo. There he is a proper kindred gun spirit to Giuseppe and all of the Rizzini family for having us and to Edward for putting it all together, and obviously being a fantastic, fantastic host. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm still smiling from the experience, thinking back on it actually, it was, it was exceptional. It really was. Take care.